Hey guys, this is Marshall Kirby from Orchard Hill Farm Equipment. Today behind me, we're gonna go over the all new DK20 SE series. This feature today is a DK4220 SE cab tractor with both a front end loader and a backhoe. This series replaced their DK10 SE series. It's essentially the same machine, so you're gonna run the same motor, transmission, backhoe loader setup. It's really just some modern updates that people have been asking for. Um, so we're gonna run over what the updates are on this cab model today, and you'll see more videos from us in the future, and we'll be doing one for the open station as well. So we're just gonna kinda give you the full tutorial on this machine, show you what this machine has to offer. Um, so starting out in the front, uh, we're gonna have a 72 inch quick attach skid steer bucket. This bucket is a standard bucket. It has bolt holes drilled in it, ready to go for a bolt-on cutting edge, and it's skid steer quick attach, which basically is a universal system, so you can hook up any skid steer attachment, whether it be pallet forks, a snow pusher, snow plow, grapple bucket, you name it. That's what this machine has, standard, which is great. All the grease fittings for all the loader pins are all inner tubed, so you're never gonna break these off uh, down by the ground here and whatnot. They're recessed inside the pin, which is a great feature. This loader is removable uh, with these two kickstands you can drop down to the ground on both sides and then also a grab pull handle right here on both sides and there's four hydraulic quick disconnects on the other side as well and then you can back away from the loader. Most people don't take this loader off just because this tractor is kind of used mainly for the loader a lot of times um, but it can be done in a matter of a couple minutes. Uh, on the front and the rear tires today, we have R14s featured on this tractor. R14 tires are kind of a cross tread, a hybrid tread, if you will. Very, very popular right now for all of our customers. They work great in mud, great in snow, great in you know sand, all of the above. They are a very good option. Um, this customer that ordered this setup that we're going over today did add a factory third function kit, which we'll take a peek at. It's up front here. Um, so this third function kit is an OEM Coyote option now. You'll see they did a great job with a plate and whatnot to hook it all up. We'll go over the controls in the cab. Um, this is for running a grapple or a snow plow, something that requires extra hydraulic functions off the front. Um, the, uh, one of the main updates on this new series is gonna be the new LED headlights. You'll see the new styling. They look a lot different and the hood is a different style hood. Um, that was one of the bigger changes that they did to this series. Um, the, the cab models got less updates than the, uh, than the open station. So we'll, we'll go over the open station another day. Um, but the LED headlights are definitely a nice look, uh, definitely give you much better visibility at nighttime. Um, on this loader, I, you know, all your, all your hydraulic lines and everything are right here. These couple extra ports for the, for the third function go back to the cab area. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty sweet setup. Uh, third functions are very popular on these models. So we usually tend to stock them at, you know, pretty high quantities. Um, grill guard folds out of the way. Now you can access your hood. You can open up your hood. There's a little pull handle right down here and you pull that and then your hood will slide up just like that. Um, inside here, we kind of got a lot going on. I'll kind of give you the once over on what we have here. So your battery's tucked away. We run interstate batteries in all these tractors down there. Uh, Donaldson air filter, very easy to pop open and clean out. Um, over here, we have quite a bit of cooler. So one of these is for your AC. One of them is a hydraulic cooler. One of them is a fuel cooler. And you got a radiator. Uh, there is a screen on the radiator that can slide out, which is a great feature. So that way you can keep your radiator clean. Um, up top on the top, we have the emission system. That's going to be your regen and your DPF system, as well as some AC stuff in the center here. Um, over around on this side, it is kind of tucked away, but we will kind of show you some of the filters and whatnot on this engine bay. So your main servicing points on this tractor are going to be on the passenger side uh, door, essentially, or passenger side of the uh, of the engine bay. So. It's kind of you know really tight in here, but engine oil filter is right here, pretty easy access. Um, antifreeze overflow fill right there. You have a fuel filter, that's what this long filter is here. There is a sight glass on these fuel filters, which is great visibility to see if it's clogged up, if it's got crud in it, if it needs to be changed, if there's ice or water in it, etc. cetera. Um, there's a primer on the top, which is awesome. So if you run out of fuel, you can prime it, or when you change your fuel filter, you can prime it helps start in the engine much, much quicker. Um, 
engine oil fill is one of the harder, or I guess one of the uh, hidden away things. Um, so it is tucked away right here. This is your engine oil fill. It is pretty, pretty tucked away. So I recommend to everybody to get a really skinny funnel to change their engine oil just for filling it so you don't spill it everywhere. Um, the drain plugs are gonna be on the bottom of the oil pan underneath here. Um, your main hydraulic pump, your throttle cable, a lot of basic normal stuff there. Uh, up top of the front axle, you have a dipstick for your front axle and a fill point for your front axle right there. Um, that takes 80W90 oil, and there's drain plugs on each bottom of the hub on the front axle um, to drain out the oil. Uh, over here, you'll see there's some extra hydraulic lines um, and then a plating system that's all covered up. This is your third function valve that this customer added to this tractor. The third function does not come standard, I should mention. It is still an add-on um, feature. It's a very common add-on, but it doesn't come standard with the tractor. Um, kind of tucked away, really hard to see, but there is a fuse panel back here, um, right where my hand is right now. That's all your main fuses for the tractor. So if you're ever got an issue or something and you need to go check those out, those are right there, handy to access. Um, the steering for the front axle is a piston power steering. It is protected pretty well with some plates and whatnot, so that's a good design as well. Um, this tractor has a loader frame, this orange frame that we see that comes down from the loader and it goes to the back axle is a great feature. That's, that's whether you have a backhoe or not, you're getting that with this tractor. That just supports that loader lift capacity along the chassis, stabilizes the whole unit out. You're lifting 2,000 pounds, just helps alleviate that stress. Um, Opening up the cab, uh, we'll kind of run over some of the cab features on this side and then we'll move over to the other side. There's cab blinkers, uh, you know, regular road directional blinkers right here. Cab lights up top, as you can see, cab side mirrors, front window wiper. On the side of the cab right here, we have two air filters on both sides to keep the cab clean from dust and stuff like that. Um, features over here, this is to turn on and off your PTO. Uh, for your back, your power takeoff. This is gonna be window wiper and then cab lights and then a rear heated or defrosted window right there. And there's a couple options to add extras um, down the road. Little cup holder, whatever you wanna call it, holder. Um, three point hitch lift and lower mechanism right there. Uh, and then you have one single rear hydraulic remote, which right now is plugged into the backhoe, but you can use it for other attachments or you can, um, or you can add more. There's another slot for a second rear remote. Um, and more cutouts for more buttons back here if you wanted. Um, seat's a hydraulic cushion seat. Uh, newer design seat, it's very, very comfortable. Um, it's like a harder cloth and it's got a hydraulic cushion adjustment right here in it, which is great. And the seat also comes forward in reverse. There is an option to add armrest to this seat, which does make it even that much more comfortable. Um, we usually stock them, very, very common option. As you can see, there's a window right here. Um, right now with the backhoe and stuff on, it's a little bit taken up. There's not much visibility. But the, the goal of this window essentially is if you have, let's say a rototiller on the back or something small, you can kind of peek through the window very, and see very close to the tractor what's going on. If something broke or came loose, you have access to seeing it without opening up your window or anything like that. Um, over here, you got your throttle. Uh, you have glow plugs in the tractor um, right there. You can do a mechanical glow plug run or a 30 second timed glow plug run, two clicks to the right. Uh, st steering wheel does tilt um, forward and reverse or up and down, I should say. Over here is your regen stuff and there is a cruise PTO feature. Um, in the center there on the ground, that knob, that is your flow control for your three point hitch. So that's gonna change how fast or slow your brush hog lifts up and down or different attachments there. Um, on the main part of the floor right here, this is your transmission selection. So forward and reverse, pretty basic. A lot of leg room having this design. Some tractors have a heel toe or rocker pedal. This one has the side by side, which gives you all the leg space you need, which is great. Um, up top in the cab, you know, some basic stuff, not a whole lot, but basically all your vents, uh, there is a a, a valve that you can close off uh, for the exterior air to not come in or to come in to recirculate or to lock it in the cab, meaning it'll get hotter faster, maybe potentially cause it to fog up worse or better by messing around with that, which is nice. Little cabin light, heat and AC, little sun visor. You can add a radio, um, 
but pretty basic features uh, up there. Um, so that's this side of the cab. We'll, we'll get to the other side of the cab in a minute, but we'll, uh, we'll walk our way around there and go over those other features. And I will close the hood in the meantime here. Okay, so coming around to this side of the cab is uh, there's a few features that we'll go over. So brakes are down here. They are splittable brakes. Um, so you can brake on one side or the other or all together. They are also on the separate side from your foot pedals, which means you can press them at the same time you're going forward or reverse, which is nice. Um, and parking brake, of course, for those brakes. Horn, headlights, all that stuff here, basic stuff. Um, over here is cup holder, phone holder, whatever you want to call it holder, but just some space for some stuff. You have a 12 volt outlet plug in, uh, and then you have a phone USB port, an auxiliary port, and then you can run auxiliary, which means you can run music through an aux cord without a radio installed in this tractor, or you can press stereo, and then that will transfer everything to the actual radio that you have installed in the tractor. Over here, just three basic things, but very necessities on tractor, very much so necessities on tractors. Low, medium, and high selector for your transmission. So low, medium, and high in a Y pattern. Um, four wheel drive, two wheel drive lever, very basic. And then over here on the floorboard is your locking differential lock to lock the rear axle. So if you get stuck, the tires will lock together and, and help get you unstuck. So that's basically all the features inside the cab, um, at least the standard ones anyways. A um, couple other things we're going to talk about is this new loader joystick, which we'll definitely focus on for a quick minute because that is one of the other biggest upgrades this tractor has. So right here is a button with a, uh, a rabbit on it. Um, what that means is this will rev up your engine for your when you're using your loader. So let's say you're lifting your loader and you're, you're idling um, and it's just too slow for you. Instead of revving it up on the RPM on the, on the actual engine, itself on the dash you can do it with this button <clears throat> excuse me by pressing and holding it for as long as you need and it will rev up your rpms now this is a feature that is not standard so the button is there you do have to add the wiring kit and the feature in the kit um, but it just makes it that much easier for us to add previously this was not an option on the loader so it's very nice that it is i don't know the exact cost yet um, i forget if they have released it this is somewhat newer but it will be coming out shortly and a great feature to be had and probably well worth a couple hundred bucks that it most likely will be. Um, over here, there's two buttons. These two buttons are going to operate your hydraulics up front, so your third function valve. So open and close, very comfortable. Essentially, you know, you can use your loader and have your two fingers there playing with your joystick for your open and close on your valve. Um, that's all standard in this loader joystick, whether you buy a third function or not. So. Um, it just makes it easier to install the third function down the road or install that thro auto throttle piece for the loader joystick. Really nice feature, um, just one of the main big upgrades on these new DK series um, tractors. And uh, and yeah, so that's that's the inside of the cab essentially. We'll run over the backhoe real quick, show you what that has to offer. And both doors are openable on the cab. You only have a step on one side. Um, they are also lockable, which is great. And your fuel tank down there, um, it's underslung, but it's got a lot of plating as you can see underneath it and whatnot. Um, very good design. Fuel tank holds, I wanna say 11, 12 gallons, pretty good size fuel tank. I could be off a little bit, but. Um, this is the KB2485 backhoe. We'll kind of give you a quick overview on this. Obviously there's not any changes to this backhoe really right now um, from say last year's model of this. So nothing has really changed. 18 inch bucket, uh, one nice feature that they did start doing about a year or two ago is the teeth are bolt onable, meaning you can take them off and have a flat edge bucket, grating bucket, something like that, which is awesome. Just a good setup. Um, and if you break them, it's easy to replace and bolt up new ones. The backhoe has many different bucket options. So this is the standard one, 18 inch, but they make a 12, a 24, all sorts of different sizes. This is the Coyote mechanical thumb. It's got you know a serrated edge on it, which is nice and it's on a mechanical system where you pull the pin, bang the pin out, or pull the pin out, and then it's on a sliding mechanism here and you can adjust it into the right position for you know the job you're doing. And or suck it up out of the way if you're like doing a trenching job, something like that. Um, so just a good feature overall. Um, 
And uh, thumb kits, probably one and two backhoes are sold with a thumb kit, so I definitely recommend them. And it's a nice add-on if you want to add it down the road. Basically got one pin right here and one pin right here, and she's pretty much on. So not rocket science if you don't get this now, but add it in a year. Um, so yeah, just good feature to have. The backhoe or all Coyote backhoes on these models have a locking mechanism for the boom so it can't sag, which is a great feature. They also come with a locking pin, which is tucked away right here. But this pin right here goes in for the sway. There's a hold right here. You put the pin in where my finger is, and now this backhoe can't sway left and right. And then there's also lockers for the sides so these outriggers can't fall down, um, which is a great feature. These outriggers do sag um, after you know sitting overnight or a couple weeks or something. So it's just nice that they have lockers. The backhoe pads are flat from the factory. You'll see a lot of bolt holes and stuff in them. You can add a lot of stuff to these. You can add rubber pads or metal grommet pads to dig into the dirt. Um, so that's a nice feature. Backhoe seat is adjustable. There's different bolt patterns, so you can adjust it forward and reverse. It also does suck up out of the way, um, which is a nice feature, so you don't get it you know, ruined by holding water for weeks on end. Um, back here, a little toolbox, standard, rear remote like we talked about, standard of the backhoe is utilizing that rear remote right now. This is your uh, windshield wiper fluid fill, um, and of course your rear window, rear cab lights, all that stuff back here. Three-point hitch arms are there, of course, category one up to the 5320. And then once you go above that model, the 6020 will have category two pinholes. Um, but category one and uh, three-point hitch, PTO back here, draw bar, and pretty basic three-point hitch arm setup uh, works well. They do have a telescopic optional add-on kit that just makes it a, that much easier to hook up attachments. Um, your hydraulic oil checkpoint is back here. Um, it's kind of tucked away. It's this little knob right here where my middle finger is pointing on. Um, and your fill is right up here um, for your hydraulic oil. And there's a couple drain plugs uh, at the bottom of the transmission and whatnot that you'll drain it out. This backhoe is a quick release, meaning you can take it on and off. There's two pins down there and two hydraulic lines. You're basically gonna set your bucket and arms in the ground, make a tripod and, and start to drive forward once you pull those two pins. Drive forward a foot, disconnect your hydraulic lines, continue driving forward. Pretty basic, on and off in about five minutes. Uh, flat ground is your friend when taking it on and off. And a really nice feature that not a lot of tractors can say is the three-point hitch arms stay on whether the backhoe is on or off, meaning they're not in your way. And right when you take off your backhoe, you can back up to a brush cutter or a rake or something and not have to reassemble your whole three-point hitch mechanism back there. So really good feature, love that about this tractor. Um, I think that kind of covers most everything. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the DK4220 SE cab tractor. Hope you enjoyed the video. We're gonna be doing more videos on all the new series um, in the coming months here. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what you think and what other stuff you guys wanna see. Thanks guys, this is Marshall from Orchard Hill. This right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end but we'll see it through